place far away from realism, where life is cocktails and the beach, with a light breeze that carries away your worries. Who wouldn't adore a shopping spree in Paris? An unlimited credit card that bought you Chanel and the finest pastries and cuisines. Oh yes, who wouldn't indulge in that hearty bread and breakfast? The kind, the kind that you are bombarded with on your phone every day. Ladies and gentlemen, the life we want is the life we see beneath the screen that we hold in our hands. On our desks, beneath the screen is the life we all need. When I was a kid, the only warning we'd been given about in relation to our health focused on televisions. We were told that too much TV would make our eyes go square. But as we progress, all sorts of screen-based devices, be it tablets, laptops, mobile phones, and iPods, begin to merge themselves into our everyday lives. Of course, these are a great source of extensive education, research, and entertainment. The way I see it, we take them for granted, and they manipulate us. Welcome to the 21st century, where millennials reign supreme. Making up about 23% of our total population, the millennials misunderstand our situation. We are living in a world where politics is testy, where the world is warming up and sea levels are rising. And the best that they could do is post two selfies and deliver 50 texts a day to think these are our future leaders. Cutting off on Facebook and Snapchat will definitely decrease how much these affect you in terms of FOMO, depression, and lack of self-esteem. For those of us who are unaware, FOMO is a persuasive apprehension that an interesting or an exciting event may currently be happening elsewhere, often aroused by a post seen on social media. FOMO comes from unhappiness. It comes from lack of self-importance. It comes from the feeling that we are not enough. But how and why are screens so addictive? Well, researchers say that when we get a new text, message, or comment, we get an increased rush of dopamine, also known as the feel-good hormone. So we relate feel-good with screen time. A screen is like a drug. The more we get, the more we want. And it's almost like telling an addict to quit chocolate, success, cocaine, or gambling. It's inevitable. And the more we tell them, the more we induce guilt because of their inadequacy to comply. We cannot keep blindly telling people to put away their phones, to reduce their screen time because it's better for them. We must give them proper reasons why the screen time is bad for them. My theory is that the aim of technology is to diminish social communication and interaction. What do I mean? Well, we went from talking to texting, from games to gaming, from emotion to emoji. With 2,823 emojis, 422 of these are emotions, which is quite a large number, since the human face only has the ability to convey 42 emotions. So we have more emojis than emotions. Researchers say that when we look at an emoji online, the same parts of our brain are activated as when we look at a human face. We may even alter our facial expression to look like that of the emoji or emoticon. Essentially, emojis have created a new brain pattern within us that we did not have when we were born. How can we make room for healthy media choices? Well, this topic is still being researched today, using references from biology and psychology. But a few ways in which we can make room for healthy media choices are, one, using devices and media sparingly, with children, especially toddlers and babies, because the more we introduce children to screens, the harder it is for them to deplete their addiction in the future, says Dr. Laura Markham. 
We can also consider the bedroom as a screen-free zone. Why? Because the short wavelength and artificial blue light emitted from screens tampers with the body's ability to rest. Therefore, in the long term, causing a chronic illness or deficiency in sleep called insomnia. And there are many other ways that I can mention today how we can diminish our screen time use. For example, trying to put a limit on our social media usage, trying to engage in outdoor activities, trying to enrich ourselves in study, musical instruments, and nature. Because when I was a kid, we would go outside, touch trees, explore, and ask questions so that our brain can grow. And so I leave you with this. Screen slaver. We are slaves to the screen. Our balance, long gone, living a life of the oppressed. By whom, may I ask? I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that you are special. You have the capacity and capability to grant yourself the freedom that you so adore, need, and desire. Thank you.